we have different versions of that story. Right? It was a deep stare he gave me deep into my eyes. And, mm, <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> I feel very fortunate to be collaborating here. This is a thread that's, uh, yeah, as Yarrow said, it's, it's beneath, beneath everything. It's like, it's easy to miss, because it's everywhere. It's like asking a fish what water is. So, you can just dive right in. The earth is alive. She has many names. And we call her Gaia. Gaia is our mother. Portions. They combined and merged and made a third. Luna, our moon, who to this day spins around us, protects us from asteroids. Now, Thea did not only bring catastrophic levels of interaction, they also brought a gift the gift of water. So our planet's suddenly rich in water and with a third, a daughter spiraling around, there became tides, that interaction of Luna and the Earth. Tides helped the interaction between land and sea, the ebbing and flowing of all our water, the wetting and drying of our shores set the conditions for life to emerge. Gaia appeared by becoming a mother. Deep time passes, continents rise, mountains fall, oceans appear. Symbiosis, multicellularity, extinctions, blossomings, extinctions, blossomings. And very recently, we appear. Now, like all other life on this planet, we too are expressions of Gaia. There's rivers in our blood. Our bones are like stone. We host a vast biodiversity on our skin and within our bellies. We're more bacterial than we are human. And 
were a little weird. <laughs> Notably different from all other species on this planet. And our ability to express and articulate ourselves, our collaboration, mostly through shared story, our manipulation, our ability to change the environment around us intentionally as well, and our ability to learn. Some cultures call our species the undone, the not yet finished. We're born naked and helpless. We need each other. That's one of our gifts, actually. And as well, of course, our reflective consciousness, which I believe are, are just layers of nested feedback loops, iterations of interaction, interpretation, one being this relationship, this feedback loop between our, our perspective, our perception, and our expression. Our perspective is a lens through which we experience the world that shapes and filters our perception, what we see and hear and feel, which informs our expression, how we speak about the world around us and being world makers, terraformers. Our expression is manifest in the environment around us, which in turn affects our perspective. We actively create and design the world as we believe it to be. This iterative loop, this relationship between our inner world and the outer world can be liberating, can bring us into deeper relationship and harmony with the world around us. And it can also entrench us into particular perspectives, even if destructive. So when we look around, I mean, we've spoken about it a bit this week, we find ourselves in a tricky situation social and ecological discord, disease, the verge of potential collapse. What happened? How did we get here? Many things. You know, some 400 years ago, there was a brutal war in Europe. War of religious ideals. An argument over truth, absolute, and a flaming demon came into the dream of a young soldier and professed to him that number and logic and reason were the only way towards liberation and unity for our species. That young soldier named Rene Descartes, through intense focus and meditations, the years to come, he successfully disembodied splitting matter and mind and declared the world as a machine and all other beings as automaton without feelings, without soul. Separated humans from nature. He summed up this worldview, this perspective in a powerful phrase, cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am. Combined with another influential philosopher at the time, Sir Francis Bacon, who said, knowledge is power. That's power over other than humans and power over other humans. These memes spread, they proliferated through Western European consciousness set the stage, philosophical stage and justification for colonization, industrialized slavery, and global extractive capitalism. Boo. <laughs> Here's the thing. Nobody is better than anybody else. All species. Ours included, all people, all communities, all ways of life. Nobody is better than anybody else. Our differences in our ways of life, our ways of being, our expressions, that make us unique. Our diversity, that is the beauty and strength, the resilience of the interwoven web that supports us, of Gaia, 
our mother, our home, and our uniqueness as a species, wow, we're built beautifully to tend, to garden, to connect, to notice, to praise, and our ability to change. So, here I offer an invitation to adopt a perspective, just to try it out. The earth is alive. All land is sacred. All life is sacred. And every being has feelings and a vast interiority way beyond our comprehension. This perspective may open our perception. The world around may begin to reveal an aliveness and deep beauty. Please, be patient. Allow this perspective to seep deep into the psyche. The trust between our species and all others has been frayed, though our relations can never be broken. What can we possibly offer to the world, the living world around us that provides everything? Why are we here? is our greatest gift. That wonder, awe, and gratitude is our greatest gift. Perhaps we're here to simply say, wow. Thank you.